Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to FNAF News. Not really much to talk about, I have a few points I want to hit on in today's video, nothing too big. But I do want to start the video off doing something I've never done before, which is recommending a FNAF fan game. I don't know, let me know if you guys want to see me do more recommendations. I personally have not played this fan game, but it seems like a lot of people enjoy it. By the way, thank you so much for clicking on the video, subscribe if you're new, and smash the like button, it really helps me out, thank you so much. So I was scrolling on the FNAF subreddit and I came across this post. It says, I've recently released my fully fleshed 3D multiplayer FNAF game, and it has almost four thousand upvotes. Let me know if you guys want to see me check this out because it seems like uh, a lot of people enjoy this, right? I'm scrolling through the comments, I'm seeing a lot of people recommending this game, saying it's pretty good. Seems like it may have a few glitches with the game itself and the servers, but I'm, I'm unbelievably hyped for a fully-fledged multiplayer FNAF fan game right now. It's called FNAF Multiplayer Forgotten Pizzeria. Again, let me know if you want to see me check it out, it'll be linked down below, go uh, see what it's all about, and I might play it in the future. So now let's talk about FNAF AR and their brand new camera challenge that's going on with the photo booth right now. Kinda out of the blue, Illumix and FNAF AR, their Twitter account made a tweet saying, hey, stay tuned for info about our brand new challenge with the photo booth happening in the next couple of days, and everyone was like, what? What, what is all this about? So the other day, they put out a tweet. They put out a series of tweets, actually. It's like a whole thread. Saying, who's ready for the first FNAF AR photo booth challenge? We're asking for your heart-stoppingly awesome animatronic pics. The challenge starts now. Rules and prizes below. FNAF AR photo booth challenge info starts on the 12th of February, which was that day when they made the tweet, and it ends on the 17th at midnight PST. The judging of the photos will occur, and the winners will be selected on the 18th and 5 windows will be announced on the 19th. Take a photo of an animatronic via the FNAF AR photo booth in-game. You must use one of the photo booth frames with your shot, post the photo on Twitter or Instagram. Follow the FNAF AR account on the platform you post it on if you aren't already following, and include the hashtag, hashtag FNAF AR love on your post. You can submit as many photos as you like. The prizes for the contest are five winners will receive the following. Their photo featured across their social media, a low value pack, which I believe is like eight bucks, a stack of Faz coins, which I think is maybe like $10, and a 20% off coupon on the official FNAF AR merch store. Unfortunately, it's only US only, which is kind of BS. So I think this is a cute little challenge that they got going on with their brand new photo booth. It's a really good way to utilize the brand new mode. And the prices aren't that bad too. Like in total, it's like, what, 18 bucks uh, worth of items in the game, and you get 20% off the merch. That's pretty good. And you get to be featured on the social. Dude, that's poggers. Uh, yeah, I actually really don't have anything against this. This is really cool. The only problem I have with it is that I feel like it may be a bit too early to release it, you know? I get it, you want to release it alongside the release of the photo booth itself, but you also got to keep in mind, the booth is like 4,000 event tokens. People will be lucky if they have like half that, dude. Really, the only way you could have had the photo booth by now is if you bought it with IRL cash or you grinded the hell out of the game. You basically lived inside a FNAF AR. So while I have nothing against the event itself, I feel like it may have been just a bit too early to do it, you know? And now we come to some unfortunate news about Kane Carter and Emil Mako's game, Chef Wanted. Unfortunately though, a few days ago, Kane and Emil uh, announced that the game will be discontinued and it will be cancelled. They have a pretty long post, I'll flash it up on screen right now, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but you can uh, feel free to pause the video and read through it, I highly recommend you do so. Basically, it all came down to inadequacy, time, and the fanverse initiative, interestingly enough. Something that really stuck out to me in this post though, is about the fanverse. They say there were discussions on Chef Wanted potentially partaken in the Fazbear fanverse. However, it would likely have been difficult since the game is quite large and uses a different engine than Click Team Fusion. And since the game contains references to alcohol and bad language. Yeah, again, please feel free to, if you're not pausing the video and reading it, definitely go down uh, using the link in the description to read the full thing. Um, it does suck. But at the same time, they already have a lot on their hands right now with the fanverse and also with their, you know, actual lives. So while it is unfortunate, 
Uh, hopefully this was for the best and hopefully this lifts uh, a huge weight off of everybody who was walking on this off their shoulders. It wasn't just Kane, it wasn't just Emil, they had a whole team behind it, so I wish everyone there the best of luck going forward. With whatever they have going forward after the unfortunate cancellation of Chef Wanted. Though it is interesting to speculate, if Chef Wanted was going to be in the initiative, was FNAC 4 and Pop Goes Evergreen going to be in there as well? Or would they have not put those games in, in replacement for Chef Wanted? Or would they have done all three? We don't know. Speaking of Kane Carter, he the other day released a few unreleased environments for Pop Goes 2. I'll put them all up on screen right now. They do look very creepy, very ominous. There's a lot of empty heads, a lot of endoskeleton heads, a lot of wires, boxes. It looks like some pretty creepy locations that, uh, for some reason, had never seen the light of day up until a couple days ago. He also released a artwork of what he calls the original absolute ending to Pop Goes. He says Black Rabbit was going to create a shrine to let herself, Toy Bonnie, Simon, Springtrap, and Fritz, Pop Goes, rest forever in a true happiest day. This image was of course split into three scenarios, these aren't three Black Rabbits, LMAO. These three scenarios were going to be revealed, unlocked, after completing each minigame in Pop Goes finale. And now I want to end the video by going through a few more never before seen easter eggs from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Sim and Sister Location. If you guys remember, in a past video, we took a look at a Ballora Gallery Easter Egg and also a uh, Glass Pressure Easter Egg in Sister Location, and the person who found those have a few more. They also tweeted out my video, so I'm assuming they may watch this one, which, hey, you are honestly making some amazing posts, and I really enjoy each and every single one of them. Keep up the great walk. So we have what appears to be four videos to go through, so let's let's get through them. Let's go. They say in SL, the texture where Beloa gets up to the glass when zapping her is unused. This is what it would have looked like if it was used. They say there are no events to have this called into the game at all. It's just like Scott added it in, but never applied anything to have it triggered. Another one, they say in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, there was unique audio that plays for the animatronic and the salvage face, but they are hard to hear. Here's all of those sounds and I'll play them all right now. And in the comments, they bring up the fact that William Afton's audio is very different from the rest of the characters. They say for all the sounds minus William Afton, you'll see why. The channel volume that plays those sounds is set to 3 when the animatronics are in the second phase of attacking, and set to 5 in the final phase before attacking. William Afton is different. The channel volume for him goes up to 40 when he's in the second phase, and 50 when he's in his final. They go on to explain that this heartbeat is from William Afton and not Michael Afton, confirming that yes, as he always says, he always comes back, he never freaking dies. Third post here, they say the red tinted baby texture in SL was originally planned for the game over screen. Here is it in action. Personally, I think it fits really well, actually, with the whole game over screen, because it's all tinted with red, it says game over in red text. I think it looks pretty PogChamp, I don't know why Scott uh, just didn't use it. A few people have brought up the idea that it was removed because Scott didn't want to spoil the plot twist of baby being very evil at the end of the game, which I do see. And then what is probably the most interesting easter egg that they have found is about the sister location custom night cutscenes. They say in SLCN there is a unused cutscene that can only be seen in Click Team Fusion. After the seventh scene, Michael looks fine where all the residents look disturbed. They have quite a long comment, I'll go over it quickly right now. 
In the events, only Michael was coded to change into a different animation frame to show he's slowly decaying. On certain times in which the scene is played, the game actually keeps track of how much this scene is triggered, causing this chance to happen. However, the residents are coded to change into their worried look after a certain time in which this cutscene was played. In short, the event for Michael works like this. On certain cutscene number, change to animation frame to show decay. No assigned animation number after Mike pukes out entered, set to default normal animation. For the residents, from this cutscene number and higher, change to worried expression and make scared people visible. You're not meant to see this because the game skips to that spring trap cutscene after that point. It's just some MFA silliness that was not intended by Scott. This is merely an oversight and is not lower important. Come on, no player is supposed to see that. I don't know, I found this bug so amusing I might do a follow up later, but not in the way you might expect. I'm telling you, I can't wait, because again, I love these posts, keep it up, link down below, please go follow this person, they are doing an amazing job. And that is everything I had gathered for today, not really much of FNAF news besides the FNAF error thing, but I wanted to make this video because, again, I found a few interesting topics I wanted to talk about, so hopefully you still enjoyed the video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side, goodbye.